Kyle here with Wicked Alaska, and it's Christmas Eve. Today we're gonna ski up the Peters Creek Trail and see how far we can get up the valley. We got Ruby, Carly, and Darian with us. It's gonna be a good time. Let's see what's fine here. Oh, it's a puppy. Ruby, the black nose sled dog, had some pretty stinky breath. Oh man, watch me slide. <laughs> oh, watch me not slide. Oh God. Okay. Up, up. Open it up as much as you can. That is yeah. Is it gonna hurt it or power through? Wait, where are we right? I don't know, it's my oh, secondary yeah. coat. <laughs> I mean, at some point you're gonna have to get through it. I don't know how to get through it other. Ready? Wow. <laughs> uh, there's like uh, the teeth and the zipper are misaligned. Oh no. <laughs> just, just open it just up. Just leave it. Okay. Yeah. yeah, I can't. No. Doesn't go down to your belly button. Breathers. Oh, I'm burning up, so they better. You gotta open up your pants then. Yeah, that's a, that's a pretty solid run. We just saw a rabbit jump out from underneath a tree, trail side, and run uphill. Ruby didn't even notice it was there. A medium sized rabbit. No, we saw one biking. Yeah, remember that night we saw the porcupine? Wait. I said, wait, you crazy dog. Up. You give me some droopy drawers, Ruby. One mile. We got an anxious puppy wanting to get running. So we're gonna let her fly. Up, Ruby, up. Good girl. Looks like we got a downhill coming up, Ruby. Good girl. Whoa. Whoa. So, right, you can take it and then meet up right there or venture oh. off. That one goes that way, that one goes that way. Oh, so we want Peters Creek Trail. I mean, they, they link along up. Along the but river. Yeah, we're yeah this want... one just goes up. This one goes along the river. Cool. I'll go first. Hopefully she goes around you. Oh, up Ruby, up. Up, 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 up. Woo. Getting some fresh tracks now, Ruby. Good girl. Good girl. What, do you see a birdie? Did you see that birdie? You guys lead. Whee! Hit it, see dog? When you french fry, when you're supposed to pizza, you're gonna have a bad day. <laughs> Life starts at fast, Darian. I'm working on my pheasant video last night. Oh. Apple bar, dark cranberries, almonds, and peanuts. Oh, I don't want craisins or cranberries Fried in there. Cranberries. Too much fruit. I don't. Vegetable. I just don't like chocolate and fruit. Um, it's got, a small amount. You don't even notice it. I got Snicker cookies in my bag too. Mm. That's what I want. Does anyone else want to take a ruby turn? Meow. <laughs> 
we're gonna take turns with the puppy power as we're going uphill so we'll all get a little bit of a break a little stream crossing Looks like we got a pretty big hill ahead of us. This is where puppy power comes into play. She helps you not slide back so much. Thanks. Your mitten. Man, those things are, are light mittens. They are. Um, they're kind of they're, nice though. They're my liner for my big ones, but they work good because my fingers get cold in gloves. So I have the glove and the mitten effect. Nice. Looks like uh, a moose is just ahead of us on the trail. Now you can tell because it's snowing out and there's some uncovered bits where he was nibbling away at the, the ends of this tree. The moose just walk around all winter nibbling the little buds off of a uh, willow and eating kind of whatever they can. Everything's picked at the ends. All the little potential cones or buds are gone. The moose really like using the trails to move around. Uh, once winter is fully set in, there's many feet of snow and for them tromping around in the snow is a lot of work. And so they'll get on these hard packed trails where snowmobiles have come through and skiers have come through and have a much easier way to walk. Uh, so most of the stuff that's edible along trails is already picked through. Moose will use them to get two different food plots. You can see he hopped up right here, went up to the, that patch of trees, probably munched a bit, then came back around and then fall himself right back down to the trail here. And he's going to be doing that back and forth. Mile four. Like really soon ish. And that's why you're not supposed to post hole on the skin track. <laughs> so we had made a decision that we were going to turn around at the fifth mile marker. Uh, and we just passed the fifth mile marker. We looked at the map and we saw that in about three quarters of a mile, we'll run into the creek. So everyone felt a little motivated to get to the point where we get to see the creek. So we're gonna pick it up a little bit and do the extra three quarters of a mile, see the creek. And then it's mostly downhill from there all the way back to the car. So we'll be able to make some good timing on the skis. Just a fun downhill. So here's the cutoff where no bikes are allowed, but looks like uh, snowmobile traffic is continuing on. Maybe it's open in the winter once the snow is deep enough or something. Sure feels like we're going down to the river. Can't be much further down. Trees are kind of flat right there. Something's living in there. Um, Carly checked the map and she said it's like right around here. Okay. You can hear it right here too. Hey, we're starting to see the creek. I think this is what we were going for, this little bend. <laughs> I promise she gets spooked when you try to go around her again and she goes to the side. Alright, this is as far as I'm going. This is snack time. Yep. Okay. Tristan has had half as much fun as she wanted to. Hi, Ruby. 
Sure. You want to catch it in your mouth? Hey, sweetie. You weren't kidding. <laughs> She's not a very slobbery dog, but she has a... <laughs> What's up, wild girl? Mm. Good kisses. Uh, take Ruben for that really big uphill coming up, but if anybody wants her after that, I can do it. <laughs> Real convenient car. Are you gonna go pee or what? Yeah. <laughs> Don't fall in your pee. What'd you say? <laughs> he falls bare willy into the snow. Don't fall bare willy in the snow. <laughs> what are you, a dog? Are you gonna pee in the same hole I did? All right, it was a good snack break and we're about six miles now from the vehicle, so we're gonna head on back. Going around the water sections, because uh, if we get any water on our skis right now, we'll lose all our glide. Carly and I whacked this branch pretty hard on the way down through. And when I was coming through, it had about a foot of snow sitting on top of it. Free speed! Wait, 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 wait. <laughs> that group of riders that just came through, they're on those dirt bikes that are modded to be essentially snowmobiles. They have a track in the back and a ski in the front. They keep hopping in and off the trail and doing these powder runs. Looks like a lot of fun. The pink flagging, we've seen a couple times. And I think it's legal to trap on this trail, which is one of the reasons why we have Ruby tethered. Most of the time when we're out on skis like this, we let her free float because she likes to run. But if there's gonna be traps along the trail, we wanna make sure that she doesn't get into them. In the first six miles or so of the trail, I've seen a couple of flags, but I think they're correlating more to the, uh, the mile markers because we just went by one and then there's mile four right here. Additionally to that, uh, I haven't seen any trails shooting off of the main trail um, that looked like somebody going to a trap line. If they're following the rules, they're not supposed to be putting traps right on a main trail. They have to be however many feet off. I don't know if it's 100 or 50 feet or even more, I don't know. If you have an adventure dog that you take out, especially in the winter, on trails. Uh, I would suggest doing some research, looking at YouTube videos on how to release a body trap or any trap for that matter, in case your dog gets caught in one. In the event that they do, uh, you do find your dog getting caught in a trap. It'd be nice to know how to quickly and safely release your dog. So on fish scale skis, there's a pattern on the bottom of the ski and that allows you to use the ski uh, without wax. Um, when you're going downhill, you'll hear that fish scale friction up against the snow and it's like a lot of the time. Let's see if we can hear it on this downhill. I'll put the camera down by my ski. So as you can tell, the pitch of that resistance increases as speed increases. It's a big inefficiency, but you live with it because you're on waxless skis and you can just go anywhere without 
worrying about kick wax. <laughs> <laughs> Big Peters Creek Trail and Trailhead. Is it just you? Clinicals and stuff, and then they can do like seven different colors. She's stopping for some reason. Dogs. We got a dog parade. Go for it. She'll go by, I think. On by, Ruby, on by. On by. On by. Thanks, guys. Good girl. <laughs> you kind of had her in a suitcase hold for a little bit, but that worked out well. The return trip is much quicker. I think we allotted for it taking half as much time as it took us on the way out. And it's because on the way out, we were going mostly uphill and on skis, the downhill is just lightning fast. Basically putting in no effort right now and cruising right along. <laughs> Here's mile one, I think. Pretty, okay. She's out. All right, we got a tired puppy. Yeah. Well, that was a fun adventure. If you want to see more adventures like this, don't forget to hit subscribe and check out our YouTube channel, Wicked Alaska, where we have a growing amount of videos. See you out on the trails.